Buildings. 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 Modern spaces where the people of Britain can live, work and play. Next time you venture out, look around you and see how modern buildings have shaped the communities we live in today. When I did my ME in uh, Edinburgh, I found a book about beekeeping in the library and I got bizarrely into it. And I particularly got into the idea of, well, one, they make a sculptural material, they make wax, which we use in bronze casting, and they have all these really strict rules about building, just like humans do. So there's sort of parallels between them as social animals and us as social animals that build our homes uh, were quite striking. So I became very interested in that and looked about for a, a building that I could construct that the inside would be a working beehive. You see some amazing buildings start to crop up in the 50s, especially the 60s. What happens with these buildings, as happens across the country, is that they become rather unloved, rather overlooked. They're square, they're boxy, they don't have the level of ornamentation and stained glass and decoration that you get with a Victorian building. So they're, they're easy to disregard. What I love about what Kath has done is that she's rediscovered these buildings and given a sense that people can actually love them again. A basic beehive, I'll start with the, um, the police station, Dunning Road Police Station, because it's based on a standard British national beehive, which is a square this size. I've uh, used a, a commercially bought one for the base of this just because it saves an awful lot of time for me, and I'd just be making exactly this. But basically you need a base, um, a floor. It's got to have, nowadays they're not solid, they're made out of mesh because there's this problem with varroa, uh, the sort of mites that um, uh, parasite on bees. So you put an open floor, this is a slideable screen, so that's got to go in, which makes it quite complicated to recreate, but I'll show you that later. There's also got to be this removable um, mouse guard that lets your bees get in there. Uh, during summer you can take it right out so the bees can get in and out as fast as possible, but you put that in there if there's a danger of uh, things like mice getting into the hive. So that's your base. I'll get the... Kind of the most important part of a beehive is the brood chamber because that's where the queen is laying all the the baby bees, the, the eggs. Um, so a, a beekeeper wants that uh, chamber as big as possible so that there's no limitations on the population size during summer if they've got a really good summer. So this is a much deeper sort of section. Um, it's got frames just like uh, you'd, you'd be familiar with in, a, um, in the top section for the honey, but they're much bigger. That's the wrong sort of frame. Um, but as you see, I've uh, laser cut the surfaces of this to, to look like Dunning Road Police Station's windows, so all the, the proportions should be correct, or as near as I can possibly make that with the divisions of a beehive uh, still intact. So I'll put the last section on to make more sense. So here's the last section which has the, uh, the outline of the frieze that was on the top of the police station that people should recognise. Um, it was a concrete relief pattern frieze. Now, I think I was told, perhaps by Martin, I was told by someone that this is a, a map of Middlesbrough. It's obviously stylised and it's... It took me a long time to figure this one out, but it's the same pattern, just twist, turned round four times. Uh, I'll show you the, the next side, because there was a glass section here. I believe when it was a police station that these were top-lit offices, so they didn't have windows down the side of that. But again, I, don't, I didn't know the building when it was, a, when it was there. Um, so this is the top section. I haven't put the wax in the 
the frames yet, but these these are frames that would hold foundation wax, which the bees draw out into cells, which again seems quite appropriate for a police station. That you've got all this cellular structure inside. The thing that delighted me most um, was the fact that the dimensions of Dunning Road Police Station really coincide very well with the the, the divisions you need to make in a beehive. Basically, when you see a beehive, they'll tend to be more boxes this size placed on the top. Uh, these are supers, they're where the bees produce the honey. Uh, how they do that is, I'll just, where's my screen? Basically, you have to stop the queen laying eggs in the honey, which would make it pretty disgusting when you're eating your breakfast. So, and it would also destroy the, the baby bees, which are, um, you know, the whole part of the colony, you have to get as many as possible. So a screen like this is placed between these two layers and that that allows, that those holes are exactly right for um, worker bees to get through, but the queen's too big, so she always lives in this bottom section producing eggs. Uh, so that would go between these two layers. Um, the last bit's the roof, obviously. Um, I At the moment, uh, there's a few other bits and bobs that go between the top super, as it's called, this honey section, and the roof itself. There's something called a crown board that allows the bees to come in and out so that a beekeeper can control where the bees are when he's um, uh, looking in there, or her, when she's looking in there. Uh, and also that would be where, during winter, you'd put um, a feeder because obviously the bees can't get enough nectar if there's no flowers. So that would all go on there. So that's why that's that will be re more raised up once it's in use. People are quite, you know, dismissive if you're f of, of cities that they perceive as having a lot of modernist architecture. I'm from Dundee originally, so I, I feel that I'm very sympathetic to that because, um, yeah, f people want their cities to look like York or something like that and obviously that's not practical to make these things so uh, there's always this sort of dystopian um, undercurrent when, when people are discussing these things. So I find that you know there are there, there are beautiful examples anyway and the buildings I've chosen I, I would say are lovely buildings. Um, this one, uh, Dunning Road Police Station, doesn't exist anymore. I was put onto it by uh, someone who works in MIMA who'd suggested it as a very lovely example of a piece of modernism. And it does have details very fitting uh, with that era. I think it was built in 1963, or, or certainly opened in 1963. And there's a very lovely, very simple frieze along the top um, that, that depicts a map of Middlesbrough, but it can also just be read as a as a piece of straight modernist sort of maybe slightly like Victor Passmore. I don't know who the artist was and I'd really like to know if anybody could tell me. So that, yeah, that was a, a quite a, a stunning example. Yeah, this one is built um, it's based on Kennedy Gardens in Billingham. It's at the moment I'm still working on it, so it's a bit. As you see, there's there's a bit of a wobble there. Um, yes, essentially the front part you see there is extraneous to a beehive, but but the building itself has this uh, tower block at the front. So um, I've created that, and I'll put a lid on that, and basically the beekeeper can use it for putting equipment like the smoker and things that they need. Um, again. This is divided up into sections. It's got two supers this time and one brood chamber. Because I've had to make the whole hive narrower than a standard one just to get the proportions of the, the original architecture somewhere right, uh, I've made the whole thing narrower, which reduces the amount of frames that are in it. So because of that, um, to get enough uh, honey storage, I've put two layers on it. So. I'll just take one of these off. Again, I've still got to do quite a lot of balcony, but um, that looks a bit, that looks quite familiar to uh, to the other one. Again, it's got these frames within the same structure, and these two side 
bits are again just extra. So I've left them open so basically uh, if bees are down the side they can just fly out the bottom which doesn't mean they're trapped. Um, I'll take the whole thing apart. So, right, take the two frames off. One super, here's another one, just the same again with these empty frames in it just now. And last but not least, much bigger, this brood chamber again. Uh, it's got much bigger brood frames within it so that you can get enough uh, of a population going. And last but not least, uh, this very fiddly piece of woodwork that I did yesterday, um, which has to do the same as the other floor that you saw earlier on. It's got to have the removable mouse guard and uh, what makes it more complicated is it has to have the pilotti legs that are uh, what you would recognise first from the the building in Billingham. And they're very unusual, they look uh, very inspired by Kabuzi with these the Pilotti legs, the stilts that the, these buildings stand on. I, and I, I suspect the people that live in this building are pretty proud of it. It looks in good condition, uh, it's still, there's, it's not in a particularly built up area, there's a lot of, sort of green space. In fact, in many ways, it looks just like an architectural drawing where, where an architect and sort of puts an idealised version of you know, what it's like to live in such a building. It's quite an important building in terms of the steel industry on Teesside because it was built at a time when the last uh, big investment was made uh, on steel making in the area and indeed across the UK because it was at the time when we were, or British Steel were at the time, uh, building the red car complex uh, with its huge blast furnace and iron making facility. It was a statement of ambition but it also uh, illustrates just how um, uh, important it was to the area of the steel making industry and the number of people it employed and, and if you think about it the the planning for this building was in 1973 and it eventually was uh, uh, built in uh, or completed in 1977 and people moved into this building in September 1977 um, at its peak around 600 people would be employed in in this building um, it was a, a self-sufficient building in many ways. There was a, a bank in those days, there was uh, huge dining areas that aren't there now, but it was a different place, of course. Uh, but it, yeah, had a lot of people in here, and the steel industry in the Northern and Tubes group at the time were really managed from this building. It's home, I suppose, um, or second home at least. Um, I think it Perhaps in some people's eyes it's not the most beautiful building uh, in the world, but it's a very practical building. And as I say, if you go back to the 70s and think in terms of having an air-conditioned building, then the actually working environment was very good. Um, so it's very important to me because through it you really see the history of steelmaking on Teesside for the last uh, 30, 40 years. So I drove in and asked to have a look at it, and of course it's a section, it's one well, it's a series of hexagons joined together. I think there's maybe about four structures that are hexagons, and that's just that's just beehive. So it had to be in. It's definitely, I would say, quite a brutalist building. It looks a bit later. It's very dark, so I have selected the darkest wood I can to recreate it. Um, but it's a very striking building. I think the other thing is the buildings have to be recognisable in their form rather than any decoration on the outside because um, there's no colours involved except for the, the sort of vague staining. If it's a window, it's this dark, gloomy colour and other details I'm putting in in brown. I found it quite difficult to find one that translated and was quite a, a visually memorable piece. So the one that it was suggested by James Baton, the curator at MIMA, he suggested uh, Melrose House, which is again is, is full of artists at the moment, which seems apt. And 
it again translates beautifully into a, a nice square uh, hive form and it's got quite recognisable external girders which um, which I've got in a pile over there that I've still got to, to sand. <laughs> but the, that's the sort of thing I'm looking for, something that you would be able to recognise. A document came to light recently which was held over in the archives at uh, Middlesbrough Council and I believe one of the councillors made it available to a history um, Facebook page, uh, members of Middlesbrough I believe it was, and that showed a master plan for the town centre in the 1960s. A lot of the Victorian architecture was demolished, part of the town hall had been demolished on this plan, but what you saw was something quite incredible, quite very, very new, um, futuristic, idealistic, utopian you might say. And these new buildings were about precisely that sense of optimism. They're about hope, they're about creating a new future. Um, they've not always worked. And the grand plans haven't always been carried out to the full extent. And sometimes you've just had the odd building put in there rather than being part of a whole. But still there's something about that sense of hope that's contained within them. And that's what I, I love about this ugly architecture that, that often surrounds us. And it's fascinating to then see that reused again. What I also love about this project though, of course, so many of these buildings are now empty. Um, if you look at a lot of buildings from that era, they've been, uh, they're often more or less derelict. What Kath is going to be doing is by creating them as beehives is making sure that they are uh, throbbing with life, 3,000 bees or something like that in, in every building, which I think is fantastic. What should people get out of this? Honey, hopefully, if the weather's all right. But um, joking apart, I think I'm always interested in the parallels between human society and animals, and animal society. Uh, these social insects have a lot of uh, sort of metaphorical connections between humans. So you do find on a lot of architecture, you'll find images of beehives and cooperative stores and everybody from monarchists to communists use bees as a, as a metaphor for their society, their idealised society. So I find that quite interesting. Um, if people like them, that's a good thing too. And hopefully it'll get more people use, uh, using beehives in the area and working with bees, which is really important at the moment.